Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a guy that a couple of guys I want to talk about for just a second here. Uh, one of them is, having a, is had a, having a birthday today, and the other one's having a birthday in a couple of days. Well, three days, actually. Danny, stand up, please. Danny has had my back since the day I showed up here. He's been behind me, shielding me from bullets and all kinds of stuff. There's no telling what's going on. Isaac has a birthday Wednesday. I would wait to sing to you on, on Wednesday because I know you want to hear me sing happy birthday to him. But he won't be here Wednesday. He's got a, an appointment. And uh, so Isaac, just stay right there. Just wait one second. All right, I know you just got through singing and giving your very best to God, but I want you to sing happy birthday with me to these, to these two precious brothers, would you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Isaac and Danny. Yes, amen. Amen. In case you're wondering, Danny is not as old as dirt, but he's getting there. Danny, I wish I'd never let you talk this morning. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So glad you're here this, this morning. You know, you know, when you if you if you come to church and if you if you're with people that you enjoy, you ought to have fun. I know that sometimes what we deal with and what we talk about sometimes is a little difficult to uh, maybe not easy for all of us, and, and that's okay. Honey, take that for me if you would. Let's give that to you. Thank you. Well, Oh, good morning, Pastor Shonda. How you doing? Glad to see you. You know, I, I have this thing where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big on preparation. I don't believe that you should come to a party unprepared, right? Everybody knows there was Big Mama. If we call her that, the Lord knows, knows who we're talking about, right? Will you join me in prayer for her? Father, we lift up this precious saint to you. Jesus, let your hand be upon her. Comfort her in this moment, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the doctors and all that may be involved in her care. God, let your anointing rest upon them, Father. Use them as your tools, as your hands extended. Bless her and keep her and heal her in the name of Jesus for your glory. And all God's children said amen. Amen. Remember her in your prayers. We missed her. She's not been able to be out very much. She's, she's, uh, she so, ha has very limited vision, if, if that. Is that a, a good way to say it? And uh, anyway, we, 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 uh, we sure did miss her. Well, Recently, the Lord's had me on a need-to-know basis. He tells me what I need to know when I need to know it. And so I'm big about preparation. I love to do the slides and all that kind of thing because that's, how, that's my sermon notes. But I, didn't, I got something early this morning, and I don't know what it is about Sunday mornings. I'm not going to interrogate God about it. I'm just going to go with the flow. Is that all right with you? Good. Uh, I'm entitling this message, The Oldest Lie in the World. If you've got your Bibles, then you're going to need them because I don't have slides. But Pastor Daniel... He's been so gracious to get those uh, together. I was able to get the scriptures to him at least. And so if you have your Bible with you, turn to Genesis chapter 3. You know, this has been a strange week. This last week has been very... Thank you for the, for the water, Pastor Andy. This has been a very strange week. You know, the, uh, the more time goes on, the more things transpire in our culture, the more you recognize there's a reason why Satan is called the God of this world. Sometimes he shows his hands. Sometimes he shows his scheme. Sometimes he shows, uh, and sometimes it's not so evident. But we are living in a moment where every demonic scheme that can be hatched is being hatched. It seems like 
that somehow, somebody, there was a dam. And I don't know if it was, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a historian, I, I'm, and I'm certainly not uh, someone who, who can uh, read and, and assimilate all the things that goes on, but it seems like from, from 9-11-01, from that point until now, all hell has broken loose. And it's just not the same anymore. And so, not that it's supposed to be, but anyway, these are difficult days. Can you say amen? What was, and I call this sermon the oldest lie in the world because, again, I didn't have a whole long time to think about it, but all that, that we're seeing right now goes back to something that is, that is innate in the heart of man. We want to be our own gods. Can I get a witness someplace? We don't want somebody telling us what to do. We don't like the idea of someone, a deity, someone that deserves our worship. I mean, when we look in the mirror, we think that guy ought to be the one worshiped. Thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate you. But this lie, this, again, this goes all the way back to the, to the garden. Do you have your Bible with you? Verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had, God had made. And he said to the woman, Hold on, before I go there, just lift your foot up. The only good snake? Okay, just got that out of the way. That's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Verse 5 is the oldest lie in the world. For God knows... That in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. Read the next line with me, please. Ready? And you will be, one more time, knowing good and evil. We know the story. We know that. Now, see, Pastor Scott, here's the thing. We're guys. We know how this works. If you tell, how many have a son? Now, how many have your daughter? Have a daughter? Okay. Would you agree with me that sons and daughters are very different? If I, when our daughter was little, she was our firstborn, is our firstborn. When she was little, if I said, "Honey, don't touch that," no problem. No problem at all. She trusted me. She didn't have an adventurous spirit at that time, and. She was not eager to get a spanking either, so anyway, no problem. Our son came along. Sorry, Katie, our son came along. And uh, he would, he wanted to be told not to do something. He loved being told not to do something because if you told him, don't touch it, Pastor Andy, he'd look at you, right? I, I mean, I would, I would say, don't you do it. Don't, don't touch it. Don't, don't do it. I'm going to whip you if you do that. He'd look at me and go, I'm going to tell you something. I never thought I had a devil. Come on, somebody. But if I did, I felt something back in the back going, hit him, get him. What was the snake doing in the garden to start with? Well, it's interesting that you asked that question. I knew you were thinking it, so I asked it for you. The reason why there was a serpent in the garden talking to Eve was because he had a God complex. Did you know that, that Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covered? He was the worship leader in heaven. He absolutely, the Bible calls him, well, we're going to look at the verse in just a second. The Bible, he was, he was, he was the summation of perfection. In other words, there was nothing that God created that, that could surpass him in terms of his appearance. Look with me at Isaiah chapter. Now, I've, I've got the verses uh, with me. Uh, thank you, Pastor Daniel, so much. And, and I, I, I'm going to try to follow the path here. Isaiah 14. I know you know these verses, but just to reiterate. Beginning in verse number 12, when you get there, say amen.
Mike, our prayers are answered. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will, say it with me, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse 15, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol to the lowest depths of the pit. And then, since you're that close, go ahead and flip, flip over a few pages to Ezekiel 28. These are the two uh, descriptions of the prince of darkness uh, in parable. When you get there, say amen. Thank you. Verse 11 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection. Here it is. This, this is the highest praise or compliment in the Bible. You were the seal of perfection. Do you see it? Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Wow. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect. Somebody say perfect. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So why in the world would God give me a word about this this morning? I want to tell you, it's very unlike me. I, I, I'm not a, a, new, a, a, a headline preacher. I don't do that. I have friends back in the day that used to tell me, boy, you, you pick up your King James Bible in one hand and the, and the morning news on the, on, the, on the other hand and you get your sermon. I don't do that. I don't, I, the, the news is the news and this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through and I'm not going to take my, 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 uh, my sermon titles or, or, or my calling from a, a newspaper. I know some people in the news business. I've got more sense than that. Amen. But this week something happened that opened our eyes to some things. Revelations emerged about drug manufacturers who have concocted a grand scheme called directed evolution. Apparently, this scheme is promoted as developing vaccines to keep the human race from suffering and dying. But the truth is, it's man trying to do what Satan slash Lucifer did in the beginning. We want to be our own gods. We want to do something to prove that we don't need anybody and we, don't, and we won't have anybody telling us what we can do. We will rule this world. We will, we, will, we will direct the evolution of this world, and we will be in control. You know what? They're just the latest. You probably have heard some names. I, I, again, I don't study this stuff. I, I read bits and pieces, and I've got people around me who, who I, I trust dearly, and, and they kind of keep me abreast and apprised of what's going on in our world, and sometimes the headlines slap you across the face and just dare you to say, uh, the devil is a lie. Just look at your neighbor and tell, just tell them, the devil is a liar. Come on, get your head in it. The devil is a liar. Amen. So, so what's going to happen? Let, let me just, I gave that sheet, that, that, those notes to Diane, because what I did, again, this is a, this is a 8, 8.05 this morning. I'm driving to church, and the Lord says, we're taking, doing a U-turn. I'm like, I'm all, I'm, whatever you want me to do is what I'll do. And so... I printed, I, I do what you do. I looked up Wikipedia about people who have God complexes. It's, it's in Wikipedia. I've got your list here from the 17th century on if you want to, to, to peruse it. Some of these people I have never heard of, and as many of these people I have heard of, and I'm not going to talk about them because I'm here to talk about Jesus. Amen. But some, do you remember David Koresh? Do you remember the Branch Davidians? What did that man do? Do you remember? Did, did you ever watch the story? Did you ever remember the story? What he did to, he, 
he did, he did not begin with that, the, the end in mind that became the end. But he began, it was a small Bible study, and before you knew it, people were eating out of his hands. And you know what happens when a man is involved in something? The people start making him feel like he's got the revelation. He becomes a god to himself. You and I probably remember the day when that story broke and he, he set the, the, the camp on fire and, and people died in that place and he died too. He wasn't the first one. There's a picture. Actually, you want to get a copy of this from Diana after service because y'all got time. Y'all in a hurry? Good. There's a picture of a guy in here called uh, Krishna Venta. And I know you can't see it here. But if you ever looked at an orange depiction of Jesus, this is exactly what it looks like. I'm not even kidding you. So, so preacher, what do you, is that your sermon? You're just talking about would-be, want-to-be Jesuses? No, that's not my sermon. My sermon is that you, need, you and I need to understand something. The Bible says, Paul told Timothy, evil men will wax worse. Come on. And worse, just when you think you've heard it all and seen it all, something else comes along and jack slaps us upside the head. Amen. And so you've got to be ready because the prince of the power of the air is a deceiver and he practices what he does. I don't know about you, but if you've ever heard some of the music in this generation, I'm talking gutter rat filth. They're artists. No, they're devils is what they are. They take their impetus, their influence, their inspiration from Satan himself. And so before somebody tells you, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, people are actually committing suicide. I was reading something. But I do keep up with mental health issues because, well, my last name is Randall, and there's a lot of that stuff in my family, and and it's in your family, too, and don't you look at me in that tone of voice. But anyway, I, I keep up with some of these things. And, and there are a lot of people that they have decided that the world is going to end anyway. And so younger and younger, they're deciding to just check out. I mean, there's nothing to stay here for. There's no hope. Can I get a help, some help in here? There's no hope. And so I don't want to be here. And so what does it matter? I'm just, I'm just one tiny little blip on the screen. And nobody's going to miss me. And young people, children. As young as five years of age, it's hard to imagine. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There's some things I can't control. In fact, there's most things I can't control. But one thing I can't control, I'm not going to believe the devil's lies. Me and my household, my family, my brothers, my sister, my dad, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, I refuse. I am not going to cop out and bite a bullet. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to flake off. I'm not going to come up with some harebrained idea that I'm Messiah. I'm not doing that. I'm going I'm, I'm to, this word right here, this Bible, I don't know what you, what you think this is. This is my life journey right here. This is my roadmap. Bec Brother Jeff, if I did not have the word of God, I would be confused. I'm not confused. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neither am I. I know in whom I have believed, and I know that he is able. Come on, somebody. I am persuaded he is able to keep me and to keep his covenant promises to me. So before you and I dig a hole and crawl in it and say, kumbaya, and come on, I'm, I'm going to be maggot food in a minute, Lord. I want to let you know this. God's plan for man has never changed. If I had a nickel for every time somebody, some prophet type came along and said, this is going to happen, that's liars. If you say something, that God told you something, and that does not come to pass, you owe, you owe the public an apology, and you need to go back to Bible school and shut your mouth. Don't print a book. Don't get a radio program. Shut up. Go back to school. Can I get a witness someplace? We, there's so many people that claim to have a prophetic voice, a pathetic voice in our generation. You don't need to listen to those people. If I come and tell you, hey, God gave me a revelation. What you, wait a second. 
let me hear more about this, but are you sure? I, listen, I, if I'm telling you something, it's based in God's word. I don't make up things. I can't. I'm not going to be found a false prophet. I'm not going to be found a false teacher. So before we go dig a hole in the ground and say, we're not, we're not going to, we're, we're, we don't want to be here, I want you to understand something. God's original plan will be fulfilled. His will shall be accomplished in this earth. You don't have to worry about somebody planning this and how many bombs they bought and how much. You don't have to worry about any of those kinds of things because all that's going on in the airwaves is an attempt to, to distract you and to get you off path and to, and to make you forget what God put you here for. Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses. So I owe God my life and as long as I've got air in my lungs and, and I can form words with my lips, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. That's our assignment. Just know your neighbor and tell them, get busy at it then. Tell them. So God's will shall be fulfilled in my life and in yours. No despot, no demon, no drug maker, and no wannabe God will ever be able to accomplish what they think they want to because God has a plan. And God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should relent. You know why? Because when he said it, he established it. His word is established and settled in heaven. And that means whatever he has ordained will happen in your life and in mine. And I don't know about you, Jeff Cooper, but I believe, I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm the happiest man that you'll ever want. I, ask my, my daughter-in-law. She sees me as my, almost as much as, maybe more than my wife. I don't, I'm not depressed. If I've, got a, if I've got a coffee pot and a pack of oatmeal cookies, glory to God, I'm in revival. <laughs> Anthony, you know, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm not going to let any devil per persuade me that the sky is falling and, and, and it's all, we, we may not wake up tomorrow. Listen, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I know where I will be. If, if I beat you there, when, when you get to heaven, you better go hunt. Hunt the throne. It, you won't have to hunt it. That's where all the angels and everybody will be. Anyway, and the glorified saints. But I'm a, somewhere close, as close as I can get to Jesus in my glorified body, and I'm going, I'm going to be weeping at his feet. I'm going to have golden hair. I just, I just know it. It's my fantasy. Leave me alone. Look at Psalm 115, 16. Y'all doing all right? This is going to be a short message because we're going to, share communion in just a few minutes. And when we do, I want us to, to be able to focus on what Jesus has done for us that has secured our salvation. Psalm 115, 16, you'll see it on the screen there. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. Whose? The Lord's. But the earth, he has given to the children of men or children of man. Isn't it amazing what God gave us and look what we've done with it. When you give a child, how many of you remember giving your kid something, giving your, you bought him a, a train set or something and you know, it, it was, this was a step up, it, this is not Tinker Toys and, and it's not a big wheel, it's something a little bit more than that and you tried to, to help, help him understand that this, this requires a little more care. You can't leave it out in the, in the, in the rain, and you got to put it, whatever. And what happened to it? $175 that you spent for Christmas for that, what happened? You picked it up in the yard, rusted. Come on, say amen. God gave the earth to the children of men. Look what we've done with this. We're destroying it. See, Greg McDowell, one of my dear friends and brothers on the back row, when Greg thinks the earth is given to the sons of men, Greg sees a hunting field. Deer to shoot. Fish to catch. The earth is wonderful. The world, not so much, but the earth is good. God gave us all things richly to enjoy. How many appreciate what the earth yields? I do. This morning, Pastor Scott, you won't believe this. Some guy over in, 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 in Africa or Asia someplace had this tree, and this thing grew and produced these beans, and then 
some guy it was Juan Valdez, and somebody went over there and got those beans and brought them back to America and roasted them. This morning I woke up with folders in my cup. Hallelujah. I said, the earth is good. Come on, somebody. How many of you like oatmeal cookies? How many of you like anything sweet? Glory to God. No, I want you to know this. You, you probably, I, I, I hate to brag. I don't do this very often. I really don't. I don't have a lot to brag about. But there is one thing I'll brag about. I have the most advanced taste buds in the world. I guarantee. I love what the earth produces. You remember Thanksgiving with turkey and dressing? Honey, the honey baked ham for Christmas. Mm, mm. I'm getting hungry already. The earth is given to the sons of men. What have we done with what, what God has entrusted to us? We destroyed it. When you give a child something he is not old enough to take care of, what's he do? He, ru he ruins it. Look at Isaiah 45, 18. Y'all with me so far? I appreciate three of you. Thank you so much. Isaiah 45, 18. In just a minute, we're fishing to go to Matthew chapter. Hold on. I'll tell you when we get there. Look at Isaiah 45, 18. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed on the earth and made it, who established it, who, who did not create it in vain. You see that? Who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. So the next time somebody is, is threatening to do something that could annihilate the human race, remember, they are not God. He has a plan. He has a plan. Say it with me. He has a plan. He has a good plan. Come on, say it with me. He has a good plan. You and I, our life is hidden. My Bible tells me my life is hidden with Christ in God. So nothing ever can touch me that God does not in his permissive will allow. So don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you hear. And don't believe the demons that are, that are trying to run the world and, and convince you that they've got a better plan than God does. Back to well, all of the scriptures. Numbers 14. Numbers 14, 21. And I'm going to answer one more question, then, I'm, then we're going to pray and, and take communion. When you get Isaiah 40, uh, Numbers 20, what is it? What is it? Numbers, yeah, that one. 1421, read it with me, please, when you get there, would you? But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. One more time, let's read it in stereo, ready? But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with with the glory of the Lord. If you highlight in your Bible, I'd like for you to highlight that verse and let that be your prayerful meditation this week. But truly, or assuredly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. No matter what comes, no matter what may happen, no matter what may be planned, God's purpose shall be established. In Genesis, God, God placed a perfect couple in a perfect environment. A snake got in the way. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I hate snakes. Bob, I'm sorry to break your heart. I hate snakes. I hate them. If I see one on the road, I'll go out of my way to run over it. Look with me, if you would, at Luke chapter 4. One of 
one of the greatest things about the life of Jesus, just to make, this may change your perception of him. You know, every other prophesied king or planned successor to a throne was born into extravagance because they were in the lineage of someone who was already ruling and whose family already had already been ruling. And so Jesus is the only king ever born that came in abject squalor. He was not born in privilege. His family, they were not heirs to a throne. Joseph and Mary were not royalty. Jesus had to face the devil on his terms, just like you and I do. The Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. He's fasting. He's spending time with his Father. He's listening. Do this with me. This is practice, saint. Just leave that hand right there for a second. The next time someone says something or you hear something that disturbs your spirit, remember, your father's got something to talk to you about. Don't listen to those voices. You listen to him. You take that hand down. Thank you. Luke 4, 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Would you agree, before we go further, would you agree with me that being tempted for 40 minutes is bad enough? Or 40 seconds even? Yes. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when he, they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's temptation number one. That we can trace to the lust of the flesh that John mentions in 1 John chapter 2. Temptation number two. Verse 5, then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. By the way, study that verse when you get home today. That will help you understand about the mess we're in right now. Satan said, all this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, verse 7, if you will worship before, all, before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, let's read it together, ready? The words in red, ready? Get behind me, Satan. Did you notice that those first four words, get behind me, comma, Satan? Do you see an exclamation mark? It did not go like this. Get behind me, Satan. No. Think about this with me. The voice that created all things, he spoke. That voice, that creative, powerful, unlimited voice, roared like a lion. Instead of saying like a lamb, we know he... He's the lion and the lamb, amen. But instead of like a lamb, instead of meekly and gently submitting to this, no, Jesus with a loud voice. Remember, Lucifer was the, was the director of heaven's choirs. He was used to loud noises. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praises. He was used to all those things. And so Jesus, Jesus, know, he knew it all. Jesus, when, when he spent, he, when, when he, when he baits his hook and he drops it over the edge and, he, and, he's, and he's trying to get Jesus to, to take a bite, what does Jesus say? He doesn't say, get, he says, get behind me, Satan. I, I can't wait to get, that's another DVD I'm renting when I get to heaven. I'm telling you, don't, don't get in my way, I'm first in line. Get behind me, Satan. You know what we do sometimes? I'm on the phone with a friend. No, use your outside voice. People in my neighborhood think I'm crazy. They're not fighting the devil. You are. Say it with me. 
Get behind me, Satan. Remember that. The next time he whispers in your ear, Jesus says this. It is written, you. Who's you? Who's he talking to? Satan. He said, you. He first tells him to get off his block. Second thing he says is, you. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Verse 9, then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Are you all doing all right so far? Okay, good. Set him on the pinnacle. Okay, somebody wasn't doing so good. Then he brought him to to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, here's, here's Satan quoting scriptures. By the way, don't believe every spiritual thing you hear. Test the spirits. I said, test the spirits. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, hmm, it has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. It's interesting that Jesus did not rebuke him there. He quoted the word. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. What was the temptation? The temptation was to take his life out of God's protective care and put it upon himself. Just nudge your neighbor and look at them really sweetly and say, the devil is a liar. So what? Jesus fought the same battle that Adam and Eve fought. The same temptation. Do this and you shall be as gods. Throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. And and every temptation was designed to puff up a human ego to make that person think that they are God. And that spirit is still in this age and generation. You might think, well, Pastor Glenn, I've never had a temptation like that, but you've had some temptations. Some of the, our temptations would take a little more discernment. Come on, can I get a witness someplace? You have to understand again, it's not what you hear, it's the voice or the spirit behind what you hear. Some things, sometimes things sound so real, so right. So how will this all end? I'm so glad you asked. You got your Bible open, turn to Matthew 24. Bless you, whoever that was. And listen, no matter what you hear, you can't believe the airwaves. There's nothing wrong with being informed, but don't let your, don't let your uh, creative imagination run wild with what could, could happen and, and what devil and despot could do this or that or the other. Matthew 24, when you get there, say amen. Verse number 3. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Read verse 4 with me, please. Out loud in your outside voice. Ready? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed. Thank you right there. Okay, so... The word Christ is the, word, the Greek word Christos. It means anointing or anointed one. Many will come in my name saying, I am the anointed one. I am the appointed one. You listen to me. Let's keep going here. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Read verse 11 with me, please. Ready? Then many false prophets will arise up and deceive many. Wow. Wow. Verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. 
but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Read verse 14 with me. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that last line. When will the end come? Then. When is then? When the gospel of the kingdom has been preached to all the inhabited earth for a witness. As long as there are ears yet to hear and hearts yet to be reached, God is still stretching out his hand and opening his heart to those to whosoever will. Can I get a witness at some place? Now, skip on in verse, uh, chapter 24 to, to verse number verse number 32. Y'all doing all right so far? Okay, thanks. Now, learn this parable from the fig tree. There, there are so many things here. If Brother Dan or Michael Penny were up here, we'd be, up, we'd be in, the, in a six-hour revelation and, and prophecy symposium, and I would love every second of it. But I'm, I'm, I'm working through this very quickly because I want get, to get, get to a point, and, and so we can, can uh, have communion together. Now, learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Now, there's a, there are subheadings in my Bible. I'm not sure if they're in yours. But in my Bible, it reads this way. No one knows that there are hours. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? Okay. No, read, say it with me. No one knows. Verse 36. But that, that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of, Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore. Watch, therefore. Say it with me. Watch, therefore. Keep going. For you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Verse 43. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 34. Everybody out loud. Ready? Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So what is our challenge, saint? To be ready. Have, have you noticed how many diversions and how many things are in the world now that can take your mind off of God? We live in a we live in a in, in a in, in a in a kitty care type of. I remember when we used to take Jared and Missy, our, our daughter and son, uh, and Mr. Bob would take them into the whatever that place was on on uh, Spring Old Springville Road, and they'd run in there. And we, I went in there one time, and I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. There was toys. I, it, lost, it was a toy manufacturing company. There was toys everywhere. And the kids were going from thing to thing to thing to thing and trade off and everything. I think our world is a lot like that kindergarten. There's toys everywhere. And all those toys have one thing in common. They get your mind off what's important. They put your hand and attention to something that is just a passing fancy. Can somebody say amen? 2 Timothy 2, 4. When you get there, say amen. No one, read it with me please, out loud. No one engaged in warfare. Hold up. How many are fighting right now for your life, for your family, for your finances, for your future? Wave at me if that's you. If you're in battle, if you're fighting right now, hallelujah somebody. If you're not fighting, you and me need to have a little prayer after, after service. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of what? I can't hear you. This life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You know, I don't know. I've never served in military service. I know there are many here that have. There's one thing I know about military service. You do not do what you please. You do what your commander pleases. Can I get a witness someplace? You don't, you don't, you're not free to make your own schedule. Someone else makes your schedule. This word reminds us that we are 
called to please him who enlisted us. Can you say amen? Last scripture, and then we're going to pray. Read, just flip over a few pages to 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to pray today because I have, a, I have an idea, I have a conviction that things are going to get worse before they get better. And just about the time you and I think we've heard all that we can possibly hear that, I mean, how much, how much more demonic can people be? I'm not really sure we've seen the worst yet. I think some, some things are coming down the pipe that we're going to have to be open and discerning about. Beloved, all 18 verses. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world was then, that then, by, the, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire. Somebody say fire. Are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack. Read verse 9 with me, please. Ready? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are, that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Verse 13, nevertheless, say that word with me, please. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Hallelujah. Verse 14, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace. Hold on. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in, I'm sorry, peace. What's the most important thing you have? Peace. You're going to hear things, we're going to hear things in the coming days, months, and years should Jesus tarry that are going to blow our ever-loving minds. Because evil men will wax worse and worse and their schemes and plans and dreams are demonically inspired and it will get worse before it gets better. Therefore, beloved, read it one more time with me. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him in, said out loud, in peace, without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. Let me skip that next verse and go, go to verse 17. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. Do you see it? If you highlight your Bible, highlight that right there. Being led away with the error of the wicked. What is the only panacea or cure or prevention from that? 
It's the very next verse. The only way to avoid being led astray or away with the air of the wicked is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That means you and I have got some growing to do. I'm not yet perfected. I've not done all I want to do. I've not done God, God, all that God has called me to do. But one thing I do, I'm, every day of my life, I wake up, God, what would you have me do? I want to fulfill your purpose for my life. I want to, I, when I get to heaven, I want to hear you say, well done. No other praise or commendation will be necessary at that point, will it? To hear the Father say, well done. This morning, we're going to celebrate communion. And, and we're going to share a, a cup and, and, and bread, and, and we're, going to, we're going to talk about what sealed and ratified the eternal covenant in our hearts. Every time that you and I gather, Pastor Daniel, I don't know if you can do this or not. I apologize for messing you up. If you can find the communion slides on there from... Thank you so much. Stand with me, please. I know it's not a spiritual song, and it's not on K-Love or those other ones, but and I don't even know what the song is. I just know the first line in it because somebody used to sing it around my house. I'm so excited. It's Katie, Katie, I knew you would know it. I knew you would know it. If you don't have a radio, just ask Katie. She can tell you any song in the last 74 years. When I hear things going on like I do now, it does not depress me. I'm excited because the further and the closer and the worser, is that a word, that people that act as we get close to the end of the, in the consummation of the ages, all that we're seeing is the same things that God promised. Evil men will wax worse and worse. We're going to hear things that will rob us of peace, but we just read it in 2 Peter. Be diligent to be found in him in peace. So that means you must fiercely, I'm talking like a raging lion trapped in a cage. When some, something or someone tries to rob you of peace, no, no, I'm not giving away my peace. Read this latest bestseller. Here's, here's a guy talking about climate change. And here's a guy, just, just, I've got a book. I, I've got a book. Hallelujah. I already read the, end, the, the last part of the book, and it tells me how things end. It's all going to be good. Hallelujah. One day, and I hope and pray to God that it's this week. I hope, listen, this, if this is the last Sunday service we're ever together, hallelujah. I'm listening for a trumpet sound. Because my Bible tells me there'll be a sound. Come on. Let's, can you imagine? And that sound, I'm not sure how it's going to go out. I'm not sure what it's going to sound exactly like, but I believe only the elect will hear it. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And right when Sister Bessie gets up out of that grave, I'm going to grab them to her toe, and she's going to put me up with her. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, hallelujah, somebody, ha caught up to be with them and him in the clouds. Wesley, if I had a good set of lungs, I'd bust out into one of those Gold City favorites. Kind of homesick. For a country. Okay, I won't go there. But anyway, but I feel that in my heart. As much as I love my family, and as much as I love you, and as much as I love the kingdom of God, and as much as I love God's people all over the world, I'm ready to go home. I don't want my children. They're too, they've seen it all anyway. They're in their 40s now. I, I don't want my grandchildren, well, some of them getting on up long in tooth too. I, I don't want my great-grandchildren to see and to, and to be exposed to all this craziness. 
every day, Gene, you know what I'm talking about. I pray, God, how long? How long? The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. The only reason my God is staying his hand right now is because somebody, somebody he's drawing, somebody he's calling, somebody he's whispering their name. They've not yet surrendered, but I heard this. Brother Dan, he definitely could preach on this. My first pastor, well, second pastor, actually, Dan Rox's Valley, one time, he was preaching on Bible prophecy at Hope and Assembly of God, and he made a statement that blew my mind. I never have forgotten it. He says, one day the last Gentile will be saved, the rapture will happen, and God will turn his attention to Israel. That was in 1985, and since 1985, that's a long time ago, I've been waiting. Lord, let the, when's the last Gentile going to be saved? Is it today? Is it today? If it is, make sure it's one of my family members. But in any case, I'm going home. Come on, lift your hand toward heaven, would you? Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, thank you that in this craziness with madmen, demonically inspired, that are doing things that threaten the human race. God, their schemes are doomed to fail. We pray, Father, that everyone involved in that type of demonic thinking will be exposed and brought to justice. Father, we're not going to waste time thinking about that because we have an assignment here. That assignment is to tell others about what you have done for us. And we know right now that the gate to heaven is still open. Today, we believe in Marshall County, Alabama, Today, new names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life for people in this county who have surrendered their lives to you. Jesus, minister to my family. God, as we stand here this morning in this sacred moment, we can think of loved ones in our families that have not yet submitted their lives and surrendered their lives to you. Jesus, have mercy. Can you pray with me, saint? Jesus, have mercy. Lord, do for them what you did for us. You delivered us from darkness. You gave us a new name. A new hope and an everlasting future with you. Do the same for them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, may, may we be about your, your business. May we be telling others in this chaos and confusion in this generation, don't listen to those voices. There's a voice that created all things, he's still speaking. Hear him. Hear his truth. Be delivered and set free from fear, from fear of the future, from fear of evil. Father, thank you that today our lives are hidden with Christ in God. Say it with me, Saint, in my life is hidden with Christ in God. Lord, that's what assures us and comforts us in this day and hour. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. You may be seated for a moment. I'm going to ask our pastors to come. and We want to serve you this morning. And